little flame, I'll get out the way. Whole lot of change, still been the same, put that on the name. I had to go through it just to get to it, look what I became. Elevate, level up, way to the top. Welcome to Star Motivates You. I'm Glenda Baker, and here's my co-host, Star Singletary. We're super excited tonight. We have Cheryl Williams on this show. Welcome, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much for coming out. I'm super excited. Your first show, the beginning of one. <laughs> first show, and it's going to be an awesome night. We're super excited because we have not only Cheryl Williams on the show, but we also have Daniel Basuti tonight as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to start off the night with uh, Star. I think you might have a question already prepared. Yes, I do. Um, Cheryl, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am Cheryl Elizabeth Williams. I'm a passionate advocate for foster care reform, and I'm founder of Fundamentals for Foster Care. Despite facing challenges in my past, I've dedicated myself to empowering foster youth through education, mentorship, and advocating for safe housing. I'm also the current Miss Elegant Coastal Plains with Pure International Pageants. Oh, that's a shock. That's good. That's great. That's wonderful. That's great. Yeah, you you really inspire us. Oh, really do. Inspire me. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, my next question for you. Tell us some more about your nonprofit organization. Fundamentals for Foster Care is a 501c3 tax exempt. It's a nonprofit organization that focuses on providing STEAM toys that stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics, toys, and then career mentoring programs for foster youth. Our goal is to empower these children and help them reach their full potential by fostering a love for learning and creativity. What uh, made you start Fundamentals? I started Fundamentals for Foster Care because, well, I was a former foster kid, and while Jesus was enough for me, I really believe in we all could use some human family type of support, and these, I believe that every child deserves the opportunity to succeed regardless of their background or circumstances. They absolutely do. That's just beautiful. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. And do you hold fundraisers for your nonprofit? Yes, we do hold fundraisers. Coming up, there's a goodies for your hoodies event where it's a collaborative event with a couple of nonprofits, including It's Already Done Ministries. But what we do, we are there to support like about a thousand foster youth get bussed in from all over the state, sometimes even other states like Oklahoma. And my nonprofit's going to be there handing out brochures to foster parents, letting them know the services that we provide. And I personally go around actually talking at this event. And I like to one on one talk with the foster youth, let them know that I've been in their position and they can achieve any goal they set out to do. And my nonprofit is here to support them in their career goals. That's great. That's good. It's nice to know that there's people out there that care about foster, you know, kids in foster homes. So do you do you plan to build a charitable organization? I am currently dedicated to fundamentals for foster care, but my ultimate goal is to establish safe family style housing for homeless individuals as they prefer pursue their education and their employment in a nurturing environment. I envision these living situations to have everything equipped for the essentials for not only the residents to survive, but also to thrive in a supportive and loving environment. My aspiration for these, for these communities to be present for every city in the world. If you share a similar vision, please connect with me so we can collaborate and leverage your networks together because we can create a better world together, but I really could use some collaboration going on. Well, we would love to collaborate with you, you know, and the more people we can get the word out, the better. So um, we definitely should all talk sometime soon after, you know, our show and see how we can help you um, reach more people. Um, can people give to your organization, Cheryl? 
Yes. Uh, fundfc.org is our website on the first page. If you scroll okay. down, donate now. And then if you donate that way, you get a tax receipt immediately sent to your email. And it is tax exempt, so you can report it on your taxes. That's wonderful. I mean, you know, if it's tax exempt, people can give and then they get it back and they're and they're helping helping you and the organization and the children. That's just a great, it's just a great program. I, everyone, please check out the website. Make sure y'all go check out their website. And will you be doing, like, would you like to go to, like, bring your fundamentals to other states, like your foster care organization? We do actually give out donations nationwide. We don't fundraise in every state, but we do actually... I have talked with many aged out youth all over the United States that are homeless and we've provided some shelter and some groceries and whatever they're needing to, I just like to see it as they're all our kids, you know, and if they don't have those guardians looking out for them, that that's what our nonprofit loves to do. Did you have another question you wanted to ask, Star? That was my only question for her. Oh, okay. So um, I saw that you're studying at Harvard. Yes, ma'am. I'm actually studying neuroscience at Harvard. <laughs> I have a real passion for helping people overcome trauma. So I'm going to keep geeking out on neuroscience and neuroplasticity until I really feel like I am like a doctorate in this so I can help people heal from PTSD, regardless of whether they've been in the military and have PTSD or if they were former foster youth. Just really want to see people succeed. That's just wonderful. You're just so amazing. Like everything you do, it's like, it's just makes me want to be a part of it just because I know that you're out there helping kids. It's like so encouraging to so many people. You have no idea. I see all the people on your social media and everyone just looks up to you. And I I'm really proud of you for what you do. Thank you. And likewise, I, I love my community of uplifting. I feel like I'm kind of the helper to the helpers. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. You're, you're, you're awesome them to have. <laughs> You're, you're just a great person. So if you could give our viewers something uh, positive to end the show with, maybe something that could help them in life, what would you say to them? You are strong. You are loved. You are capable of achieving great things. No matter what challenges you face, remember that you are not alone, that there are people that care about you and believe in your potential. Most of all, God promises to be extra close to the orphan and the widow in her distress. And I have seen that firsthand that we are chosen by the Most High Father to do great things in life. Keep pushing forward. Stay positive. Never lose hope. Your future is bright, and you have the strength and skills to overcome any obstacles that come your way. Absolutely. That's beautiful. God always first. I love it. I always put God first. Mm -hmm. Always put God first in everything you do. That's right. Well, we really... Really appreciate you coming out to be on our first show. Um, we're just looking forward to seeing all the changes that you make in the foster care um, program that you have going on. And we hope that somehow our podcast can bring and shed light on what you're doing and maybe perhaps get more people to donate to help you be able to, what, to move forward in what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. And I know you're a part of some awareness media. I know you're working on a, a great project with the gaslighting and I hope to encourage you on and as well to team up with foster care media so the public is more aware of the over 500,000 that go through the foster care system every year. And just so on to know y'all. Absolutely. We look forward to working with you and we look forward to having you again on another show so we can talk about some other things that you have going on. Yeah, yep. like a 
busy. <laughs> you are very busy. You're a busy girl. Well, guys, you have it here. You just heard from Cheryl Williams, all the amazing stuff that she's been doing in the foster care program. And up next, we have Danielle Basuti from Insidious 2 and God of War. So please stay tuned. Thanks again, Cheryl. Have a good evening. Thank you. Hi there. I guess I'll start. <laughs> my, name is, uh, my name is Danielle Basuti. Uh, I am an actress, writer, director, producer, singer, songwriter. I do not do math or your taxes. Do not ask. Um, I uh, Let's see. I've, I've been, uh, I guess, doing what my, my heart's desires, living out my heart's desires um, ever since I was a little girl. Uh, but professionally um, after college and, uh, you know, just sort of hit hit the pavement and started pounding the pavement 21 years old and, and built a career for myself and uh, lately have been emancipating myself by creating my own content, which has been empowering and wonderful. And um, I'm just happy to be here with all of you today. We're so excited to have you on the show. I'm, I, I just love you to death. Not only... Um, are you such a great friend? You're just a great person all the way around. Well, thank you, Glenda, likewise. And I'm, I'm so happy to have been brought into Glenda's life um, through a project that we've been developing here for about a year. And the script is going through some really great rewrites, but we have our focus on another project. So I just think it's just that time and in, in, in a season in, in a woman's life, especially a woman's life, but a person's life, you reach a certain point where you just, you stop asking for permission and you just start creating. Yeah, we're making it happen, and this is the year for us to do it. This is the year. This is it. I think Star uh, might have a question for you, Star. And I do. Um, how did you first get started in acting? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, I, you know, it just sort of was from the very beginning. I have um, all, a lot of family members that are associated to the industry in, in some degree, uh, actors, writers, directors, cameramen, uh, decorators. Um, and so it was always around me. We are a, a big Italian family on both sides, lots of artists, lots of entrepreneurs. So it kind of made sense for me to be an artist and a self-starting artist as well, because it was, it was somewhat in my blood and reflected uh, within my family. And my dad was uh, a set dresser on some of the best um, sitcom shows. And when I was a little girl, I was so curious and he would bring me to set and sometimes I would just sit and watch. And then eventually in high school, um, of course, I got involved with plays and music and choir and things like that. But when I was in high school uh, and old enough to work, um, I started doing background work on Friends and Step by Step and uh, The Sybil Show and I'm trying to think if there was another one that I'm forgetting. There is another one. It'll come It'll come to me. But um, it was step by step that I got my first featured extra and then friends. And then, oh, yes. And I, I, I never was background on Seinfeld, but I do remember watching it because they were on the same lot. And I just learned so much from being an extra, from being in the background, you know, just watching Jennifer Aniston, like rehearse her lines and her blocking. And um, it, it just taught me a lot. And then I got my three vouchers. I got my SAG card in 1999 and um, I never looked back. I've just been auditioning and studying my craft, went to college, learned, learned acting, learned theater, learned music, learned dance, and um, have just been applying it ever since. That's amazing. I, I had no idea what your background, I guess I never had asked you before. It's like, it's really cool to find that out about you. I didn't know yeah. that your dad was involved in the industry. Yeah. Did you like being on a set of friends? Say it again. Oh, on Friends, it was amazing, of course. Yeah. I mean, you're with some of the great, greatest, like, you know, comedian actors in, 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 in the television and, and as we know, feature film space. And uh, at that time, it was the 90s and it was right in the prime of, of just their legacy, like blowing off the roof. And uh, yeah, it was a thrill. That's great. That's great. How long have you been in the entertainment business? Um, so I... I wanted to start a lot earlier than my dad would let me. <laughs> he was a child actor, and I think he really wanted me to have sort of a normalized childhood education. And and I don't I don't blame him for it. There are there is one caveat though, because I do think getting started a little earlier kind of gives you a leg up. However, 
I did get a great childhood. I applied myself in many different facets during, you know, elementary, junior high, high school, went to college, learned the craft, got a degree. And then, I mean, I couldn't get out fast enough. I took like, I think I took double the amount of um, classes per <laughs> semester just so I could like get it all in in four years, get out at 21 years old and, uh, you know, got my headshots, got my resume and just, you know, fumbled my way up to, you know, and, and, and it's really a roller coaster, right? It's, it's, I don't know anyone that's ever just had like a straight shoot trajectory, maybe some people that have those connections or just that, that extra little gift that God just goes, Boop, there you go. But for me, it's been kind of one of these little zigzags and um, yeah, I just, I love it. And I never look back. What was one of your favorite projects that you worked on? It's so hard. I saw that question. I'm like, it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible because I could say True Jackson VP was amazing. It was my first series, you know, opposite Kiki Palmer and this incredible cast. Uh -huh. I could say, uh, you know, the, the one of the first big notable things I did um, was uh, uh, Boston Legal. It was a David E. Kelly drama with William Shatner and James Spader, and that and Dana Delaney was incredible. That was a pivotal pivotal moment. Being my first recurring role on The O.C. was also incredible, you know, up against Peter Gallagher and that incredible cast. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then I would probably say, you know, there were so many great things in between. But um, my next series, Dwight and Shining Armor, I got to play a very unhinged, very fashion forward witch named Hexala, who's been bouncing around for centuries. And she was incredible because... One of my favorite comedians and one of my heroes is Madeline Kahn. I don't know if you, uh, Star, you may or may not know because you may be too young, but she was a star of a lot of Mel Brooks movies. And she just is incredible and so sophisticated and subtle in her humor. And I just grew up watching her. So I got to channel her through that. And then, of course, I would say God of War would be a huge I, legacy piece for me as, as an actress, as, as an artist, just as a human being, the way it's changed my life, um, playing Freya, being a part of this incredible franchise that is one of the most celebrated video games of all time has been humbling and the most, one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. Okay, tell us about what you're currently working on right now, as of right now. Very exciting star. So, um, so actually Glenda is working with me on two projects, um, <laughs> which is such a blessing. Um, so I've stepped into writing and directing and along with my producing, it's a psychological thriller horror drama called Wake Me. And the tagline is what if you've been sleepwalking your whole life? And it sort of explores sleepwalking as a metaphor to the things that we're unconscious of in our waking life, the traumas and pain from our childhood that goes unresolved can create a monster within our subconscious. And that monster can sometimes call the shots from behind the scenes. And usually when that monster takes over, we're hurting ourselves and the ones that we love. And so um, it's an exploration of that. Um, it's a psychological thriller. So there's lots of twists and turns, lots of jump scares, but <laughs> Glenda's involved with that. She's helping to executive That's produce, nice. and, which is incredible because all artists, we need our we need our investors. We need our paid the patron of the arts. Um, and so she's been helping to connect some um, financing to it. And then after that, we're going to step into a project that Glenda actually is a, a story by credit with called Osiris. It's a dystopian sci-fi horror thriller um, about when AI actually locks a family in their house. And it's coming, everyone. It's coming. <laughs> Just be careful what you sign up for. Um, and it's that was, happening. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the, the brainchild of, of Glenda. And it, the, the script has gone through a few rewrites. It's going through another. But that will be our next project on the docket after we complete Wake Me. A great project. Great project. I'm so excited about all these projects. And Wake Me is an incredible story. And, and also, I can't wait to see Osiris. Oh, so exciting. I'm sorry, Star. I think I might have interrupted you. You're about to say something. Uh, no, I was just listening to great projects y'all was doing, but I do got a question for you. Um, do you have any more songs that you plan on releasing? Songs. Song, like, um, yeah. Thank you for asking. So music is my heart, and Glenda can relate. And I, Star, I don't know if, if you're in music at all, but it, I love it so much. I, I, I was pursuing it in my 20s for a while playing out like along with Sarah Barialis, like 
We were both playing the same gigs. And somehow the doors to acting opened up to me in a more favorable way than, than the music. But the music is never going anywhere. It will always be a part of me. One thing that I love to do um, is I like to write songs in the vein of my character that I'm playing. And I've done that for a few different feature film projects. I recently just did it in a project called The Blue Rose, which I, I would love to share. Just got a uh, theatrical distribution. We will be um, premiering July 11th in select theaters. And then from the 12th uh, through the 19th, uh, we will be playing um, in these different theaters. And so I want to encourage anyone, if you see the Blue Rose, uh, we'll also be available on Amazon and Apple to stream it. Or if it's in your theater, go see it and support independent filmmaking. These are the stories that that really matter. I mean, listen, I love Marvel. I, Marvel, I love DC. I love Disney. Don't get me wrong. I'm just waiting right. to be a Star Wars character. But I will say... <laughs> It's just really great to hear some unique voices out there. And that's what you get with the indie filmmaking. You know, you get these human pieces that you can really relate to. And so The Blue Rose is very special. It's very David Lynchian, if you like that sort of surrealistic film. Yeah. And um, yeah, and so that's what's happening right now uh, for me. I wrote a song called The Blue Rose, and I'm going to be doing a music video around the song, which will be sort of a companion piece to The Blue Rose. And then lastly, the la one of the last songs... Um, that got featured in a project I did is called Hollywood Heist. And we haven't got our distribution yet, but uh, I'm a co-executive producer on that. And I also have a, a supporting part. And I got to sing an original song I wrote called Salem. And here's what's interesting. I wrote it when I was 23. So just yesterday, uh, I wrote it <laughs> so many moons yes. ago. And I got to perform it. Very musical theater, very Bob Fosse cabaret, very Chicago, um, with two burlesque dancers by my side. I mean, I was Jessica Rabbit all night, and it was amazing. <laughs> and um, um, amazing. And there'll be a music video for that as well. So yeah, so Star, I'll always be writing music. Uh, in my dream, you know, I'm Joni Mitchell meets Tori Amos meets Sarah McLaughlin. I'm I'm somewhere in there, you know. I, I just it, and maybe who knows? Stranger things have happened. Maybe it'll it'll happen one day where I'll I'll get signed and make a proper album. But I will always be writing songs. I will always be doing music. I was blown away when I saw how many songs you had on YouTube. I had no idea. Like, you don't, you, you know, here I am sending you my songs and you've never once been like, oh, go to YouTube, check out. I'm like, <laughs> you're just like so humble. I'm like, she has so many songs on YouTube. Like I had, I literally had no idea. I got a few. It's been yeah. great. <laughs> it's, it's impressive. It really is. Hopefully everyone listening will go check out Danielle's music on YouTube. You can check it out there. You can check it out on Spotify. You can check it out. I don't know if I'm on Pandora, but Apple Music. And yes, by all means, yes, come and listen. And if you like it, great. I, I, I it's, it's for you. <laughs> yeah, beautiful songs. Like it's really impressive. Like how many you have out there. I had no idea. Oh, thank you. Well, tell us something. So we know that, you know, everyone knows you for Insidious 2. They know you for Frio, uh, God of War. But is there something that maybe our audience maybe has no idea that you were in? That's something that you're, like, really proud of? Oh, yes. That's such a good question. I mean, maybe just some of the theater that I've done. But, well, you know what? Actually, I would say Dwight in Shining Armor. Here's the thing. If you like Monty Python, The Princess Bride, and Freaks and Geeks, you're going to love this show. It's got a little bit of Mel Brooks. It's, it's, it's medieval meets middle America, modern day, and it's wackadoodle dandy. I mean, it's, it's so great. The problem was we were on a network. It's not a problem. We were on BYUtv.org. It's just a lot of people didn't know where to find it. And it's this simple. You put in your browser, byutv.org, and you can watch it for free. I mean, it's not difficult, but everyone's like, but how do I find it? I'm like, well, how do you find Netflix? <laughs> you go to Netflix. You just go to byutv.org and it's free. Okay. Um, and it's free. Okay. So one thing I would love to share with anyone listening is please go and watch Dwight and Shining Armor. If, if, if I could have lived in that character for the rest of my life, I would have been happy because I got a <laughs> murder. It was hilarious. It was so fun. Yeah, check it out. We'll have to check that out. Definitely have to check that out. Thank you. What films are you most proud of? Films? Yeah. Out of all your films, which ones are you the most proud of? 
I mean, they all have a special place and moment in my life. Um, the first one um, I did, Tropics, was crazy. And I did it. I don't know many people know about that one. That might be one of those weird ones to go and find. Um, I had red curly hair and I was 25 and shot it in Costa Rica. And then I did a faith-based film that I was, I'm very proud of called No Greater Love. Beautiful story about a husband and wife um, coming back together. And, um, you know, we need more positive messages. Um, obviously, with my Christian background, it, it meant a lot to me to be a part of that and actually drew me closer in, to God and my faith after doing that film. It was very touching. Um, you know, and then I... And then, uh, I did a couple horror films, you know, Insidious, incredible, working with James Wan and Rose Byrne and Patrick Wilson and Barbara Hershey, one of my heroes growing up and, and still is. And and I, I love her dearly. And um, and then working with Don Mancini and Curse of Chucky and Fiona Dorff and Brad Dorff. I mean, that was incredible. And um, and then and then a great comedy I did called Back in the Day. That's another one I would share, kind of a, a little hidden gem. Back in the Day, starring Michael Rosenbaum and Marina Bakarin and great ensemble comedy, kind of a throwback 80s vibe to those great ensemble comedies about going back home and realizing, you know, that maybe, maybe, maybe that small town you were from had some value after all. And, you know, this guy that's gone off to be this great actor and star, he goes back home and starts to learn things about himself again, like later on in life. And Harlan Williams is in it, Nick Swarston. I mean, it's just a hilarious, Chris Palaha, hilarious, hilarious cast. And so that was a lot of fun. Um, oh my gosh, that sounds like, you know, Harlan Williams is a hoot. I met him in Canada on a set of, I'm trying to think what movie it was. Oh, uh, wow. Well, he was, he was just a really nice guy. He's hilarious. He's, yeah. I've become very close with him. Yeah. Him and Michael and, and Chris Palaha, I stayed very close with. So. Oh, that's great. That's great. You've done so much and you, you know, um, some of the films I, you know, I didn't know that you were actually in and I would really like, what was the name again of the Christian film? Oh, No Greater Love. Yeah, you no can. No Greater Love. Okay. I would like to watch that. Do you know what it's, what uh, network it's on? I think Amazon. I know for sure Apple, but I, I would go to Amazon at this point. It's probably kicking around there. Yeah. It's okay. a lovely story. Let me know what you think. I will. I'll probably check it out tonight. <laughs> When you're not on set or doing anything with music, what do you do to relax? I'm cooking. Like my friends are in the other room. I was literally <laughs> cooking all night. So I love, I'm Italian. I want to cook people. I want to feed for, I want to feed people. Um, I've been, you know, I've been getting into this, uh, this uh, sport called padel. It's like um, a truncated tennis court. So it's a racket sport. It's got a wall. So it's a little bit of racquetball meets tennis. Um, anything in nature, hiking. I love the water, any form of water, lake river, stream, ocean. I, I, you know, just, just rounding out my life. And as I get older, just the different priorities that, that come in. I mean, I've, family and friends have always been a priority. Um, but yeah, for me now it's rather than ch chasing anything, I just want to create from a place that's really organic and um, that feels good. And also to know that like, I've still got my life no matter what, it doesn't matter if they're calling me back, if I'm right for the part, it's just, this is this is the queen era in my 40s. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I love that you're doing it all yourself. You're just making it all happen. Yes, ma'am. Writing, producing, directing. I mean, and, and you're like wow. the total package because you're also able to put your own music into the film. So it's a really big deal. Thank it's you. Powerful. Powerful. Thank you, Star. Thank you. <laughs> Do you play games being that you was in God of War? Yeah, the God of War is just completely. I got my Freya wings right back there. <laughs> We're all over my place too. Yeah, I. Um, this is a, a game changer for me as an actress, as a human. The people I've met there will always be the, some of the dearest people in my life, forever. And um, it was one of the first times I was on a winner stage, just constantly like we were just <laughs> winning awards and 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 people loving the game, and it was just breaking their heart and they were naming their daughters Freya and their their cats Atreus and they and it just it and it brought the gamers like closer with their father and their sons and it really was a very special moment in time it will always be there it'll be a legacy and uh you know hopefully it's not over over um but we shall see what the future brings um but no Freya has unequivocally been one of the biggest gifts of my life yeah 
Well, we love to end our show, Danielle, on something positive. Okay. And we were hoping maybe you could share something positive with maybe a young actor or actress, maybe a piece of advice that you would give them that might be able to help them uh, with their careers. It's yes, I, I know this by by heart because I've lived it. The first thing you want to make sure is that you have a great support system around you. And you really want to ask yourself, is this something that you absolutely love? I don't care if people tell you you're good or not. It does not matter. Do you have to do it? And if you have to do it, then you're meant to do it. It's God's God gave you a gift and a heart's desire. So you live it out. Does not matter if someone tells you that they think you should quit. You know how many people have told me that or told people that have risen to the top? How many no's I've gotten throughout? You just have to keep doing it. And I would say start creating your own stuff now. Start emancipating yourself now. And also importantly, study the craft. Just because you can walk and talk doesn't make you an actor. And just because you can pick up a piece of a pen and a paper doesn't necessarily mean you know how to write a screenplay. You can write down your thoughts and ideas because everybody has a story. Everybody is allowed to tell their story. Everybody, please tell your story because you're enriching other people's lives. But study the craft, you know, a a empower yourself that way. Um, find, find your tribe. It may or may not be a family member. Maybe it's someone outside the family, but find the people that are going to support you and just make sure that you're taking care of your heart and your soul and your health. And you're, you're going to do great. That's great advice. I wish somebody would have said those words to me back when I got started in the industry. So these are great words of wisdom coming to someone who's well-respected in the industry. I hope that you guys will watch the show again, write down some of the, um, some of the shows that Daniel's in, listen to her music. And Danielle, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you on our first episode. And you mean the world to me. You're such a great friend and such a genuine person and a great actress. And we thank you again for coming on Star Motivate You. Everybody, please check us out on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and YouTube. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week with Eddie Deason from Grease and Polar Express. Have a wonderful evening. Wow, my pleasure. Thanks, ladies. <laughs>